Kelly here and I am back with another video for Sam and Seth Stamp and today I'm going to be using the You Are My Favorite die cut and the Cuddly Critters Accessories stamp set. So one of the things that I love about this stamp set is while it is made to go with the Cuddly Critters stamps you can totally use it on its own which is what I'm going to do today. So I have the full sticky post-it notes and I am stamping the heart balloon several times on top of that I'm going to use them as masks. And I'm using um, the Intense Black, which is Copic Safe. And this was just easier because this is what I'm going to be stamping them in on my actual card base. So when I trim out my images, I prefer to cut them down just a little bit smaller. I keep my scissors straight and I turn my paper. Now, you're probably asking, why do you need 12 hearts, Kelly? Well, the reason that I need 12 hearts is not just to get my balloons stamped down onto my card base, but because I also want to do some ink blending behind it, so I wanted to protect all of the balloons from the ink blending. And I have, for a long time, really made, uh, you know, made my own masks. I've tried different, um, you know, masking papers. And for ink blending, it always seems like I struggle um, to find something that works for me. And these actually held up really, really well. I only had one little issue with one, and I think it's because it was stuck to another piece of paper and or another piece of post-it note and not stuck to my actual card base, which is um, Nina 110 pound, by the way. <laughs> so um, here's we're going to do the ink blending. I'm starting with um, sea glass, which is going to be my lightest color. And when I was on retreat, I... Um, had asked Laura Basson because she's like the queen of ink blending and I was like why is my ink blending all splotchy Laura help me <laughs> and basically what it came down to was I had too much ink on my um, ink blending tool on the foam so she told me to blot it off on a piece of paper before I put it to my paper and you know what that actually worked so from sea glass we're going to lake shores if you, um, I, I wanted a gradient so it was lighter. I took the sea glass probably about three quarters of the way down the card for the lake shores. I took it about halfway. And for the, the last color I use, um, here, which is high dive. And this is a, a very strong color, so I blotted off quite a bit, but I really just loved the little bit of blue that it has in it. And this I did about a quarter of the way down the card. But you can do whatever ratio makes you happy. I just wanted the bottom of it white because I wanted my sentiment um, to, I wanted it to be white and I wanted it to work well with the background that I had. So I left the masks in place while my ink blending was done. And in that same accessory set, they have like three little stars, three little circles. I think three, is it three little hearts? No. Three little diamonds, sorry. It, oh, there's a couple of hearts in there too. I clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I wanted to just fill up that area. I wanted the top of my card to be the focal point. I wanted it to be really heavy and full up there. So I used the circles. I mounted them all three together. And then at some point I took off the uh, large and medium and just stamped the smaller one. So that it would, it would kind of drape down. I took off my masks. Um, and then they have a little, can, I don't know if I'm using it the way that they intended for it to be used or not, but meh, whatever. Um, it looks like little pieces of confetti. I used it to add little, um, curly cues to some of my balloons. And then we're going to get into the Copic coloring. So use two colors for each balloon and I will show you each combination as I use it. With the lightest color, I coated the entire balloon. Then I went in with the second color and added some shading. I didn't go all the way to the edge. I left a sliver of the lightest color. I added um, some very simple shading, just a few flicking motions at the base of it, uh, at the base of the balloon. And then I also added some shading just below the dip of the heart, um, where like the bow of the heart is. And this was just to give me some good dimension. If you leave that little bit of sliver of light, it helps your item to look transparent. And I wanted my balloons to be transparent. So when you saw me color that purple one at the beginning, I you saw me fill in where the rest of the heart should be, even though there's no black line. And the reason that I'm doing that is so when I add the other colors on top, uh, you'll be able to see them through each other and they will give the appearance of being transparent. Um, and you'll also notice since we're this close that some of my masks were a little off 
we will fix that later on uh, with our Copics as well. So let's don't stress about it. If that happens, there's a way to fix it. There's pretty much a way to fix everything. <laughs> so don't be don't stress out about it. It's just a card, yo. Um, so I'm doing the same thing with the blue, and you can see where I colored over the blue, um, the blue over like the pink and the purple. It's very subtle. Uh, the green, because it's such a, um, it's just like an electric green, and it is my favorite um, combination for greens. It's the YG0103, and then I usually use a 17, but I didn't use a 17 today, because like I told you, we're sticking to two colors. Simple shading. Um, but it was very strong, comparative to the other pastels that I had used. So I did have to go back in some of them um, where the colors overlapped and add a little bit, like if I had originally used the B000, I had to go back in over it using the B0 so that the contrast would make sense. And the colors would blend well together and you'd be able to see them. So if your um, transparency isn't working out for you, just go back over it with the same colors, but remember whatever color you put on top is going to be your dominant color. So if you want the pink to show through, end on the pink. If you want the purple to show through, end on the purple. So here while I've been talking, you can see I'm adding just a little bit of shadows. I'm using a um, two BGs that are more, um, they're not as bright, they're more gray based. And this is also how I fixed that shading. Um, anytime my mask is just a little bit off, I look at the Copa Cup markers that I have and I find one as close to the background as I can and I just fill it in. 99.999% of the time I have a marker that matches and I don't own all the Copics. I don't think you need them all. Um, and it works out just fine. So after I did the shadows, I went in with my white gel pen. I'm adding just a couple of little highlights to the balloons just for some interest. And then I'm also going to take that white gel pen and where I added the shading to the dots, I'm going to outline the inner edge of the circle. So the inside of it. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I knew I wanted to add glossy accents to them to make them shine and pop up a little bit. And this will help give the illusion of some depth with that white edge on the droplet of uh, glossy accents. So I always outline all of my images. That's just the way I roll. <laughs> it makes me happy to have bold black lines with bright colors. So I'm outlining all of this. I outlined all the little confettis. I outlined all the balloons. By no means do you have to do this. It's just something that I prefer to do. And then just for a little bit of variation, I went in and added some curly cues to some of the already stamped lines just to kind of break it up and, you know, maybe extend some of those lines down a little farther. We're going to get into the die cutting now. So I went ahead and put down my die cut. I just used regular old painter's tape to hold it in place um, because it will hold it securely, but it will not rip my paper, which makes me happy because we've already done all this work. <laughs> I would be so sad if we ripped my paper. So I just cut straight through it, and then I also cut um, a piece of the Simon Says Stamp uh, white craft foam, and I cut it, you'll see that the foam is bigger than my card base, and this is because I wanted to make sure I was going to have enough room to line up the two die cuts. So I figured I would just um, adhere it, and I'm just using a, a tape runner and just randomly applying it in between the letters. If I got any on like the open areas of my letters, I just um, used my scissors or my finger to just kind of wipe it away, and it, and it worked fine. But I wanted to give myself a little bit of playroom to make sure that they all lined up and that I still had good coverage on my base. I didn't want the when it fit on my card base for it not to be level. Um, so it was a little bit like a smidge tricky lining it up, but I think like it was totally worth it because I love the way that it looks. So once I had it lined up, then I just pulled back what wasn't adhered and just trimmed it off with my scissors. Um, if you need a, I guess, a flush edge, uh, this probably is not going to be for you, but it doesn't bother me because nobody's going to see the back of my card, so I don't need it to be flush. It really doesn't matter to me at all what it looks like. So I did the same thing with the tape runner and just, you know, coated the back and put it in sporadic places over the um, lettering. And then I mounted that on a white card base. And I didn't put in any of the letters back in. I didn't put in any of the centers of the letters. I thought that it just looked super cool on its own with the dimension and almost, you know, no color except for that little bit of um, blue green that comes down by the U and the R. 
I'm using clear wing Costella to add some shimmer to my balloons um, because this one I am actually going to be mailing. I'll be sending this off to a friend. I mean, I have intentions of mailing it because, you know, sometimes they don't work out for real. But anyway, um, so and here's that glossy accents I was talking about. I'm adding that to the circle confetti. And um, I'm right handed, so I always work left to right, so I don't smear my glossy accents. If whatever hand you are, whatever your dominant hand is, make sure you're paying attention to that so you don't ruin your pretty card. So that is the entire card. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.